Hello, excellent people. This is your Daily Excellence for April 26th, 2021. And today we're going to talk about self-care. In particular, I want to talk about asking for help in your self-care management journey. This is kind of coming off the heels of the self-awareness stuff that I've been talking about. So yesterday we spoke about temperament and I felt like a big key in taking positive action with regard to your temperament was having the self-awareness to know who you are, at least on some actionable level. And today I wanna to talk about self-care. And when I say asking for help, what I mean is I believe that it's in your interest to be willing to ask for help when taking care of yourself. So I'm gonna give you a fairly concrete, grounded, kind of physical answer or, or example of this, but I think that the principle applies broadly. So I have been lifting weights and grappling and rock climbing and running for, I don't know, years, 15 years for running as an active sport. And then the rest of that stuff has come in over the years, right? And I've accrued injuries and I've accrued, whether it was overuse or acute compensation patterns due to poor technique, whatever. I've accrued all the, the scars and scar tissues that you might expect from a person who has done what I'm describing. And I actually have done quite a lot of research over the years into proper technique and a broad array of exercises. Uh, I worked as a personal trainer for about three years and, you know, did a at least a year's worth of active preparation for that career. So I'm, I'm well versed in movement modalities, exercise modalities, and even sort of like self, you know, massage modalities that can accomplish the goal of solving the problems that you know you have. But there reaches a point at which you cannot effectively solve your own problems. And I have honestly been at that point at multiple times in my life, but I've kind of been coming up against the edge of one for the past little while. I have a longstanding injury that has led to muscular imbalance, that has led to scar tissue and compensation patterns that's rooted somewhere in my upper right side on the upper back or whatever. And I've worked on it in many ways and I've had some success. So I got a fella to come over and do some massage for me because he'd been working with my wife and she'd had some really good success with him. And he was able to, you know, make some positive effect. And so then I came out here and I got to work on moving around, doing a really light, highly diverse workout, trying to repattern some stuff now that he had reset some things. And this is going to be an ongoing process. And I guess that's kind of what I want to draw attention to is self-care and management of yourself for the long term is in fact a long-term process. And I want to encourage those of you who are actively engaging in self-awareness and actively engaging in self-improvement or at minimum sort of a, um, we'll call it a, you want to be happy and content at minimum with yourself, right? I think the happy and content are great goals. I think happy and content are fairly low hanging fruit. And I think that you can always aim for something greater than just happy and content. But I also don't want to exclude people who just want to be happy and content. You know, I made a post the other day and I was talking about easy being boring. And that's my personal bias. But I also know that there are people out there who that's what they want. They've had enough difficult in their life. They just want easy for a little while. And, you know, maybe they, if they've had it for a while, they might change their mind. But right there where they stand in that moment, they just want a little bit of easy. That's self-care. As far as I'm concerned, that's self-awareness. That's self-care. And... What I want to draw attention to is because this is a journey, because this is a process, what self-care looks like now is not necessarily what self-care looked like in the past versus what self-care looks like in the future. And 
how you approach it and whose advice or assistance you get will change. And so I want to encourage people who feel reluctant to seek active advice. You know, it's very easy to sit and to watch a video and to kind of spectate and then to maybe go and do some of those things. It's very easy. And I think that's awesome. I think it's great that we live in a world where there are such easy avenues to, to improving yourself, to caring for yourself. But sometimes you need help. And so, you know, this is going to go on to LinkedIn, among other places. LinkedIn is full of coaches, maybe a little bit too full of coaches, but that's neither here nor there. There are coaches who can help you with, let's say you're trying to make decisions and you don't know how to manage all the information. There are coaches who can help you to refine your decision-making process. Let's say you have emotional, psychological issues. There are therapists who can help you with that. Let's say you have a faith-based issue. Let's say you were raised in a, a community of faith and your faith is not what you want it to be or your the way you're living your faith is not the way you want it to be. There are priests to help you with that. Let's say it's the opposite where you are the kind of person who was never raised in a faith community but you have felt something empty and you've seen religion out there in the world and you think there's something, maybe there is something there. Same thing. There are priests there for that. You know, in my instance, like I said, it was a, it's a fairly grounded, very easy example. I had a muscular imbalance. I had tried to fix it on my own. I have personally recently been getting worse. I could tell I was getting worse. Nothing was yet to the point of truly acute, but I've been having more and more discomfort in my shoulders. I've been feeling more and more stiff. Uh, I've been having more sort of like low-level pain. And so I sought out help. And this is me telling you that I believe that when self-awareness is a value and self-care is a value, then seeking help along the way should be a totally acceptable, if not encouraged, mode of exercising those values in the world. Because that's what we want to be doing is we want to be living our values. It's not enough to say we have them. It's not enough to think them. We have to live them. And I believe that we are better through the assistance of others in almost every endeavor in our lives. I think that you have brilliant people, lots of brilliant people. I think that I occasionally am a brilliant person. I am always made better through the help of others. Always. So, if you would care for yourself, seek help early and often. If you would care for yourself, ask for help in so doing. Thank you, excellent people. I'm going to go back to enjoying this beautiful day.